I'd like to thank Gundy and um, Abby um, for letting me be in the show. I was looking forward to the show. Like Gundy said, I met her years ago. I uh, retired from Army in 2011, and I was doing more of the digital thing back then because it was something new a lot of people wasn't doing. So I wanted to get my hands on it. And um, Gundy had a holiday show, and uh, I had a piece in a holiday show. So that's when her gallery was on A Street. So that's when far back we go. But uh, my journey has been a little bit different. Um, like I said, been in the military. Uh, when I joined the military, it was because I wanted to get the GI Bill and go to college to be an artist, you know. But end up staying longer because I had a family, got married, had kids, and had to take care of them first. But the dream never stopped, you know. I was 20 when I joined the Army. I deployed to the Gulf War. Um, after the Gulf War, deployed to Afghanistan 9-11, did all that, those tours as well. But the dream to be an artist never stopped. Actually, that's what kept me going. So even when I was deployed, I had friends that were, worked at maintenance or did carpentry. And so specifically, they were like designing desks for me so I could draw while I was deployed. So that was something that, you know, kept me get on my way. But my journey has kind of been like a spiritual journey uh, because when I was in the Army, all I used to do was paint like soldiers and military stuff. And when I, get, when I got out, that wasn't the thing that I wanted to do. So when I retired from the Army, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to paint because I really didn't know how to paint back then, but I knew how to draw. So everything was basically pencils. And so I started picking up colored paints and I actually started out with um, water-based oil paint when it first came out because I didn't know how to paint at all. And I knew it would be easier for me to start with that. And so I did trial and error and stuff like that. And eventually people started to like my work, but I wasn't at the level that I wanted to be at. So I was always seeking out somebody that I could learn from, somebody who could teach me to learn what I wanted to learn. And so using my GI Bill, I also wanted to learn how to do animation. So I went to school and I learned animation first. But there was no jobs here in Colorado Springs teaching or for animation. So I said, hmm, what am I gonna do now? So I ended up going back to school again for media design on the GI Bill that I had left to get my degree in media and graphics and stuff like that. So the GI Bill ran out. Got eight more months of work for college, but I actually got a job doing graphic design. So I was like, okay, there it is. You know. But still want to be an artist, want to do the regular painting thing. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And so luckily one day on Fort Carson, I went to this PX. Y'all know what the PX is, right? So I went up to the PX, and there was a lady selling these figurines. And I was like, those figurines are like a Thomas Blackshear figurine. And I was like, because I always studied artists. I would get on the internet try to find artists that I wanted to look like. And Thomas Blackshear is where I wanted to go because I love his work so much. And she was like, well, you know he lives here, right, in the Springs. I said, what, are you, you lying, right? She was like, no, he lives in the Springs. That day I went home looking for a phone book. We still have phone books. So I was flipping through the phone book, looking up names. Oh, there's his name right there, his number right there. I called him up, I said, he's not gonna answer the phone. So I'm ringing at the ring, he answered the phone, he said, hello, I said, hello. He said, who am I speaking to? I said, man, it's Kevin. And he said, what, what's going on? I said, well, I know your name is Thomas Blackshear and you're a well-known artist. And I was wondering if you have an apprenticeship program. And he was like, no, I don't. Well, I said, I'm sorry, that I don't take up no more of your time, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, you're going to give up that easy? <laughs> and, I <was> like, <laughs> and I was like, well, no, if you want me to, if you're going to help me out, I'm ready to talk to you today. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I got some things going on. But if you come by my house in a couple of weeks, I'll give you, get back with you, you can come over to my house. And we can sit there and talk and see where you're going to go. And so that time, that time came, but it never happened because he had some things going on in his life at the same time. So at the same time, I was trying to do comic books. And so the Denver Comic Con took off. And so I had a show at the Denver Comic Con. So I went with my friend and my friend's daughter. And so I stood up to stretch for a minute at the comic show. And as I was stretching, I looked down the aisle. And I saw this guy and this young man walking down. I said, that looks like Thomas Blackshear. Because I knew what he looked like from photos. So as he walked down the aisle, I stood up and looked at him. And I said, you're Thomas Blackshear, right? He said, yeah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Kevin. I'm the guy that talked to you on the phone. He said, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to get with you. We're supposed to you know, talk about He said, I had a lot of things going on. But I tell you what, I have a summer program that I'm going to do a workshop. Then you come by my studio and bring your portfolio. And that was like maybe... 10 or 12 years ago now. And so went through the workshop, learned a lot from him, and um, try to, of course, you know, as you're trying to learn somebody, you start to try to emulate them and try to learn what they learn and know what they know. 
And we laughed because when Tom used to walk by the table as he's teaching me, I would freeze and I would stop. He said, what'd you stop for? I said, we'd wait for you to pass by so I could keep paying. I, <laughs> so he's a good teacher. You know, he's a real good teacher, but he'd be hard on you because he wants you to learn. But anyway, so over time, I was going to college at the same time. I was trying to learn how to paint at the same time. I was illustrating a comic book at the same time and, and doing stuff like that. So I was just trying to figure out how I was going to make this happen. But as time went by, I just practiced every day, practiced every day, practiced every day. Things got better over time. So that's how this thing started. Um, so the internet kind of helped me out a little bit too. So I always look for galleries that have calls for artists. And I found a gallery in Atlanta, Georgia. I was, was, I was drawing on my desk. I just heard, listen to the video, so they were looking for artists. I said, okay. So I jumped off my desk, went to the computer, and looked to see what this gallery was called. It's called Black Art in America. I said, where is this at? It's in Atlanta, Georgia. I said, okay. They were looking for small works of art. And um, I've noticed before they had shared some of my work on their social media. I said, okay. I think I you know, submit them some work. And so I sent them a message real quick. I said, hey, my name is Kevin. I showed you some of my work. You know, I show some work online, and I would like to submit some work to your gallery. So you look for some small works, and they said, "Sure, send you stuff." And I sent it. And so, about five minutes later, they said, "Hey, we like your work. We think we want to represent you." So I got representation that night, and so that's how this journey began. That was like, that's probably like six or seven years ago. Yeah. So you all want to know about my painting now, right? Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna stand up. All right. So. Like I said, a lot of my paintings got to do with me being on a spiritual journey just because I didn't know what to paint when I got out of the military. So I started thinking about my military career, thinking about the things I went through when I was deployed, um, things that, you know, my mindset was, even though you're deployed, you can still be at home. He said, what does that mean? Well, at night, you're sleeping in your bed or laying down, I would close my eyes and just think about the things I would, where I would like to be at and the things I would like to be doing at that time. So... A lot of my work has come from something higher than myself. And so basically what I do is I just think about, you know, the good things in my life and the good things that happened. And I think this painting career is something that's come from something higher that I didn't really think would happen, but it happened anyway. And it, it kind of laid out for me. The plan was always there, but I didn't know it. And it was something I always wanted to do since I was a kid. Uh, it's kind of a transition. I call myself kind of like a spirit. A, experimental artist because I get bored real quick and I have to jump around and try different things. Um, so starting out with Thomas, I used to paint like real bright colors and we had a conversation about try not to make your art look so much like candy, you know what I mean? You know how the colors of candy come into play. And so these different, all these paintings were coming in phases. Like these first two paintings right here, I wanted to pull back on colors and just try to figure out a different type of a limited palette. And so basically I wanted to work on shadow, shadow and lighting and mood at the same time during that process. And so, and then in the next transition was the painting right here and the painting in the corner back there going to the patterns because I was working more on detail and trying to, like I said, copy other artists and stuff like that. So basically this is me coming more into my own where I'm trying to simplify things because in my older paintings, you will see like clouds in the backgrounds, trees and stuff like that. And I say, you know what? That's not really me. I want to try to figure out where I want to go with this. And normally I will find reference for photos, ideas to paint my portraits. And then what I would do, I would try to figure out what I was going to use for my background. But now I'm at the point now where I might find a, re a reference of someone or something I like painting. I will start out with the reference. But then I'll put the reference away and don't look at it anymore. It just start coming out of here. This, well, going back, this, going way back, it started in comic books. You know, I always wanted to draw powerful people, you know, capes, superheroes, and stuff like that. But over time, I started pulling more towards wanting to do storytelling in painting. So that's going back to doing like the trees, the mountains, the clouds, the grass, or whatever's in the background, or whatever's going on with the person in the portrait. But now I'm at the point now where I'm focusing just on the person themselves. And that's how that transitions. So just trying to simplify things, but still telling a story. You know, a lot of sometimes these paintings come to me, like I said, spiritually. Like I said, I'll start out with the figure, but then I just start putting the reference away, just start painting and forget about everything around me and don't think about nothing else around me until my wife calls my name. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then she just messed my whole world. Oh, you stop. You just messed me up. I wasn't here. I wasn't here. But, yeah. So. Are these models? Are these people you know? Um, most of it. Most of these are not models. Most of these are just portraits that I find that I like. But at the same time, I change things up. You know, um, I try to find things that capture me. Like I don't try to copy the portrait or anything exactly. Like I said, once I see where I can go with it, I put it away. Like the design and the hair. Like to me, what do you see in this painting right here? As far as do you see that? Where, where's the hair at in this painting? Is there hair? I'm not gonna tell you if it is or isn't. <laughs> okay, but I'm just just the idea. You see what I'm saying? That's just the idea. I usually like to have people, you know, get their own interpretations of my paintings because I don't want to, you know, kill the idea for them. You know, because when I'm creating a painting, sometimes I only know where I'm going with it. Like that one on the end right there. I just got crazy with that one. I start with an idea and just said, let me try this, try that, try that, just try that. Mm -hmm. Going back to yourself, looking into yourself, you know. Usually let people on the outside of us determine who we are and let us know who we are and mess up our whole world, right? So when our eyes close sometimes, you just think to yourself, this is who I am, this is what I'm going, this is what I'm going to do. Just going back to the mood of things, work on the lighting and the motion. Um, usually my paintings are very graphic, like that one right there. Even though it's some lighting in it, but I used to do like real bright colors and I wanted to set the mood in each one to give you a feeling like, uh, again, I don't want to go too deep, but... Um, just to help with the emotion of the paint, more or less. Yes, even even if I use reference or before I even start a painting, I draw ideas, you know, thumbnail ideas of what where I want to go. But again, those things have changed too. But those are just to get those ideas out of my head and get them down on paper, um, and then draw on canvas with the pencil first, and then go into the paint. I know some people start with just the paint with washes and stuff like that. I still use a painting pencil as well. Uh, I usually start with the portrait first and then go to the background. I know a lot of artists start with the background and do the portrait, but I do it the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Or, uh... Well, all right. Let's thank everybody. All right.